come and do the training. So you need people who are trainers. As I mentioned earlier, you know, I would recommend the folks from HSA Canada. They're really good. They can come and do this training. But if that's all you do, you're not going to get the change you're looking for. You need people who are going to spread the skills, reinforce the use of the skills, and we're calling them coaches. And again, those people are frequently frontline managers, supervisors, the people who have a normal coaching role. And they take the skill from confidence to habit. But unless you have leaders who are listening and acting on what they hear, you're going to run into a wall. Because the people who are spreading the skills, the people who are getting the skills to be used, are going to learn what's working and not working in your services. And if they learn what's not working and there's nothing they can do about it, they'll get discouraged and quit. They won't quit your agency, they'll just quit trying. Have you ever heard of RIP, retired in place? <laughs> we tell people there's optimistic discontent and cynical discontent. And when you get cynical discontent, you get people who give up. We're going to try. So you need to have this kind of learning wheel, this double learning wheel going where people are learning, embedding, people are teaching, applying, and it works for leaders and it works for coaches, and each one feeds the other. And when you think about this, there's levels of change. So if you're out there applying the skill and you see how it can be used to improve somebody's life and it doesn't require permission, just requires that you notice it. That's a level one change. When you see a change, but it requires that you get permission, it requires that you change a policy or practice, that's a level two change. When you see a change that's required, but the ministry rules are in the way, the ministry funding's in the way, you need to engage in advocacy, and you're seeking a level three change. And if you get this to work, you get change flowing up and down. Because a level three change, if somebody says, oh, We'll pay for a service that we didn't pay for before, or we'll pay for it differently, or we're going to change our, the way we inspect or the documentation that's required. All of those kind of level three changes should produce level two opportunities, which then produce level one changes. So it goes in both directions. And that whole thing I talked about earlier about change agent and change target, when you introduce the skills and you get people to use them, you see level one changes. Almost all of it is change agent. People just go, wow, I could do that, and it makes a difference for Bill. Leaders who are interested, who are engaged, do the easy level two changes. Easy level two means I'm a change agent and I don't have to be a change target. When I have to be a change target, those are the more difficult changes. 
So we've worked with people where we've lined up with better group homes, better day services, but we don't see the group homes becoming smaller. We don't see the day services shrinking as people move out into community. We just see better group homes, better day services. That's that middle bit, that second column. And you don't want, you want transformational change, but you don't want transformational change overnight because you don't want too much chaos. No. There's too much chaos, people will get hurt. But you want people to move this forward, you want people to be able to think about it. And in order for a change to happen, you have to do something called changing the path of least resistance. And I'm going to spend, I don't know why I always structure it this way, I wait till you're really tired and then give you a lecture about change theory. So hold on for the most esoteric part of the day, eat more sugar, a um, guy named Fritz wrote about this starting a couple decades ago. He said, humans take the path of least resistance. So if you want to change where people are going, you have to change the pressures that they feel. If you want to change where they're going, you have to make the old way harder and the new way easier. And you have to do it in a way where you're thinking through what are the pressures that people feel. Well, the external pressures, the biggest, most powerful external pressures is what's paid for and at what rate. If you want more of one thing and less of another, change how it's paid for. Years ago, Virginia, the state of Virginia, was a hotbed of innovation in employment. At a university setting, Virginia Commonwealth University with a guy named Paul Wayman, really being innovative in employment. And then somebody got to the rate setter and said, we need to pay more for segregated day services and less for employment. And employment vanished in Virginia, went away. The people who cared about employment didn't go away, they couldn't afford it. And only in the last three, four years have they changed that policy and employment's coming back. What are you paying for and what rate? And then, what's okay? What's authorized? What's approved? How many of you run into something where you go, this is what would really work for Bill, and they go, we don't pay for that. So, what's paid for, what's approved? Or what can be dressed up so it looks like it? And what do people come in and inspect? What do people come in and measure? Those are the pressures that you don't have much control over. You have advocacy. You, know, you need to be able to talk to the ministry people and say, here's what needs to change in order for you to get the outcomes you're looking for. They need to understand what kind of pressure this is produced. And there, in the US, we're now working with the state where the ministry level person is going, I get the levers I have, and I'm going to use them. And we're going to see change in that state. But for no other reason, but because she's changing those four ones. But there's also internal. We did that exercise this morning about assumptions, and about values. Those really shape the bottom one, organizational culture. And you need to really look at 
structures and practices. You really need to look at the skills. The people have the skills necessary. You know, we tell people, go do community connecting. And, we, and the people that are doing the day-to-day -day work go, how do I do that? And you go, by connecting. No. You're not giving people the skills necessary to be successful.